for more, let's turn to John Ghazvinian. He's the executive director of the Middle East Center at University of Pennsylvania. Uh, John, so much to talk about. Let me begin with Iran's missile attack here. Did Iran really have any other choice at this point? They didn't respond after Ismail Haniyeh's assassination in Tehran. And then we had assassination of Hassan Nasrallah in Beirut. What choice did Iran have? I mean, you're quite right. Uh, Iran has clearly demonstrated over the past few weeks, actually the past few months, really, a tremendous reluctance to go to direct war with Israel. Um, you know, Iran found itself in an absolutely impossible position, or perhaps you could say that the Israelis very cleverly put Iran in a, an absolutely impossible position, where it could not not respond. Um, the entire concept of the axis of resistance, the idea that Iran uh, leads this uh, axis of um, st both state and non-state actors, ranging from the you know Assad government in Syria to Hamas, Hezbollah, uh, the Houthis in Yemen, etc., would have been exposed as completely bankrupt uh, if Iran had not responded to the assassination of Hassan Nasrallah, the explosion of pagers in Lebanon, the direct assassination of Ismail Haniya on Iranian soil during the presidential inauguration in Iran. I mean, at a certain point, there was no way Iran was not going to respond. Um, at the same time, it was clearly very, very reluctant to be dragged into any kind of direct war. And twice, both times, now once in April and once now, Iran has chosen um, a form of retaliation that allows it to save face whilst also minimizing, in fact, mm -hmm. in fact having almost no Israeli casualties uh, in order to avoid uh, a more severe escalation from the Israeli side. However, what we've seen again and again now over the last few months is that Benjamin Netanyahu is absolutely determined to try to drag Iran into this fight. Yeah, you, that was my, actually, that was my next question. Uh, does Netanyahu even want some kind of uh, diplomatic uh, solution, any kind of off-ramp or de-escalation, if you will? How do you think Israel is going to respond now? I mean, is it going to be this tit for tat constantly? Uh, it's very hard to know, of course, and I'm not you know, privy to any of the decision making in uh, Tel Aviv. But I think that um, what we have seen, you know, Benjamin Netanyahu had a reputation for much of his career as being someone who was more bark than bite and someone who was very reluctant to go to war. Clearly, that's been dispelled over the past uh, 11, 10, 11 months. Um, you know, one of the ironies of all this, you know, it's, it's been dramatically exposed, I think, to everyone in the region and in the world. Um, that Prime Minister Netanyahu is, and there's no other, there's no nice way to say it, warmongering. Uh, the reality is, and this is one of the strange ironies, is that the Iranians and the United States actually seem to share, for once, uh, one kind of strategic interest, which is that neither country wants to be draw, wants to see a, a wider regional war in the in the in the region. Uh, the trouble is, of course, the Iranians and the United States have a, have one of the most dysfunctional relationships uh, of modern times. And we'll never acknowledge this. Uh, but we've seen both times. I mean, it was ironic and interesting to me that the United States was the one that warned that Iranian missiles were incoming into Israel today. Uh, that last time in April, it was a very similar kind of scenario. Uh, the Iranians had clearly signaled to the United States uh, that they were uh, about to no, attack. No, but let me tell you, the State Department actually denied it. They said they had absolutely no prior knowledge from the Iranians that they were going to do this. Yeah, I know. I mean, they did say that, and, I, and one has to, of course, take that at face value. But I would, I would, um, you know, venture to say that. I mean, we don't know where the reality really is. Uh, the, you know, the supreme leader went into hiding uh, a couple of days before this. I mean, we've had a lot of signals uh, coming in. So, John, um, how do you think all of this is playing out on the streets of Tehran? There was video today of a group of Iranians um, chanting and uh, celebrating this. I'm just curious. Um, your take on this, I mean, uh, I, I don't know. What do you think about the Iranian reaction on the streets? Look, Iran is a deeply divided society today. The Islamic Republic is more unpopular than it's ever been. Uh, at the same time, it has this new reformist president who has been talking a lot about trying to come to some sort of new nuclear uh, uh, deal or arrangement of some kind with the, some kind with the United States and the P5 plus one. Uh, the Supreme Leader Khamenei has uh, also been you know, given his endorsement of that. So Iran has been moving in a slightly, for Iran anyway, slightly more dovish direction in recent weeks. Um, obviously, this makes that impossible. Um, you know, the reaction, you know, in terms of Iranian public opinion, I think that for the most part, uh, the Iranian public is very, very tired of, uh, of sanctions and of economic hardship and uh, international isolation. 
and there isn't a tremendous appetite for regional adventurism. At the same time, the Iranian public recognizes, I think most of it recognizes, that um, Iran is not going to sit on its hands at a time like this either. So it's an interesting time for uh, the domestic scene as well. And I finally, I have to ask you about uh, Bibi Netanyahu's speech a couple of days ago directly to the Iranian people. He talked about uh, how regime change will come a lot sooner than people think. He said, don't let a small group of fanatic uh, theocrats crush your hopes and dreams. You deserve better. Your children deserve better. The entire world deserves better. The people of Iran should know Israel stands with you. I don't know how far that would have uh, really, how well that would have played in Iran. Uh, right now, I don't, uh, this idea of, uh, you know, Bibi as this kind of great um, sympathetic figure, this peacemaker who's concerned with the hopes and aspirations of the region's people is not going to play very well anywhere in the region. Um, you know, look, the bottom line is uh, Netanyahu ordered that strike uh, while he was speaking at the UN. Um, you know, and, uh, you know, I think that those kinds of gestures will appeal to a certain segment of the Iranian public and perhaps to the Iranian diaspora, um, but uh, probably not much beyond that. All right. We'll leave it there. John Ghazvinian, good to have you back. Thank you, sir. It's a pleasure. Thank you.